Hey everybody, it's me again, behind the voice behind Break the Mold Studios Equine Art. Um, and I have another new video, uh, time-lapse sculpt coming at you guys today. Um, the biggest request that I got on my last video was a how-to on how to um, sculpt a horse armature from scratch in Blender. Um, since I started in the middle on my last one. Um, so I'm going to be doing that today. So without further ado, let's get into it. Um, so I, I start out with the general sphere that Blender just gives you. Uh, make sure to keep X mirroring on. Uh, make sure to have my guidelines up while I'm working on this because it's really important to make sure that things are symmetrical since you are going to be working on this piece with X mirroring on for the first uh, good bit. As you can see, I have my reference photos on the side. The horse that I decided to go with for this reference um, was a, a race fit young um, thoroughbred filly. So I'm paying really close attention to the general shapes of her body as I'm uh, working on this. Um, I always like to start out with the torso because if you say start out with the head or something you're going to be really be stressing uh stretching and stressing the mesh if you try to just pull and add on to it from such a small area um i also like to you know just have the the body mass of the horse centered uh in the uh program and you, you can do that afterwards if you decide to go with a, a different order of operations here but I, I like to start out that way. Um, as you can see, I'm sort of pulling um, with the uh, elastic uh, stretch tool, the legs there. And uh, when you start out with a mes mesh like this, uh, there's only so much that you can pull. You can't really do the legs all in one session. Um, you kind of have to pull them and then smooth them and then remesh them and then pull them more. Um, and uh, Basically, the purpose for that is that when when you pull them like this, it's it's pulling the the vertices and the faces um, larger than you should be. As you can see, you can see a little bit of the uh, mesh and the graininess in the hips and the legs as I'm working on this. Um, and uh, when you remesh, uh, it goes back over your piece and uh, distributes those faces evenly, um, so that you don't get that triangulation and that, that sharpness. Um, I'm probably not using the correct terms here. This is all self-taught stuff for me. Um, so I <laughs> apologize if there are people who are listening to this who are like, I know the technical term for that and you don't. And I mean, I totally get you. I'm, I'm not as uh, <laughs> educated on this. Um, but as you can see, I started out with the torso and then I um, worked on the general shape. And, and it's really important to get a good um, scale structure. I'm, I'm not thinking of the correct word right now, but you really have to think about how the sizes relate to each other when you're working on something like this. You know, um, you don't want a back that's way short, but hips that are the correct size or, or a head that's gigantic. And that's something that I really struggle with is I, I tend to draw the, the heads quite large on these animals and um, then have to go back in afterwards and uh, size them down, which you'll see me do in this video. Um, but it looks really awkward at the beginning. You'll, you'll see that this little horse ends up looking kind of like a llama. Um, until I get things sort of smoothed out. I like to work on the profile view of the horse first and then work on the, the front and rear facing views um, in order to make sure that I'm getting stuff that looks kind of correct from all angles. I'm just blocking in the, the general shapes that I'll need later when I'm working on this. Of course, the, the ridges of the eyes, the nose, the ears, uh, things of that nature. Um, I don't get too into detailing in this video. Um, she still looks kind of awkward at the end of it, um, but this is how I start my meshes when I don't uh, uh, reuse one. Uh, as a general rule nowadays, I, I have a base mesh that I made that's just basic uh, average horse anatomy, and I, 
um, start from about the position that you see at the end of this video and uh, just adapt it to each horse because that saves time and it, it saves uh, energy and, and, and you know that you didn't uh, cause any holes or, or any um, floating articles or anything in your mesh uh, if you already have it ready to go. But um, it is nice when you're doing something that has a really specific body type like the race fit little quarter horse or well, a thoroughbred that I'm working on here um, to, to, to start fresh and, and really pay attention. As you can see, she looks very odd right now. I, I don't usually like to show this part of the sculpting process because it does not look professional. <laughs> um, another reason why I started in the middle in the last video, I didn't want to come out of the gate looking like I didn't know what I was doing. Um, but here I'm paying a lot of attention to the length that the legs are supposed to be in relation to the body and the angle of the hocks and things like that. Uh, I think that's really the most important thing when you're working on these is angles. Um, I'm going to uh, rotate those legs back in a little bit after I've done some more adjustment, but as you can see they're standing too straight on the horse on the left. Um, she has them kind of propped up underneath her as opposed to straight down from where they connect to her shoulder. And um, I, I will adjust that. And I'm adjusting the head and neck here while I'm uh, working on this and that was the biggest uh, issue for me when I was doing this. I, I, I continued to create the neck a little bit too U-shaped, um, a little bit too weak. Even though she does have those attributes in the photo, uh, they were not as exaggerated as I was making them and I do go in and adjust that and will continue to refine that when I finish this sculpture if I ever get to it. Um, here I'm uh, doing uh, what I mentioned again, um, pulling those legs, but uh, as you can see, you can really see the faces uh, when I've stretched the mesh out. So I, I just use the inflate tool, inflate them a little bit, and then remesh and smooth them uh, to get rid of that issue and, and create more usable areas for, for me to continue to, to stretch and mess with and make those hooves that I need to do on the ends of the legs. I pay a lot of attention to the base work on this piece because you can sculpt a, a beautiful face, um, a beautiful shoulder, a beautiful hip, um, legs on something, but if you don't get the base anatomy correct, if you don't get the angles and the scale of everything correct, then it's going to come out looking wonky no matter what. Um, <laughs> As you can see, I lost the, <laughs> the uh, horse for a second there. That happens to me a lot. I accidentally zoomed out all the way and lost her. Um, and I, I think it's kind of fun to show you guys these because you, you only ever see the finished pieces and you never see this, this portion of the sculpture where they look incredibly awkward and um, un unseemly. Like, she looks more like a llama right now. But as you can see, I'm, I'm sort of putting in those markers that I know are there and that I can see in my reference, like the jawline and the, the muscle of the neck and uh, where the eye sits and the shoulder sits and things like that. And that's very important. I do a lot of tweaking with the head and neck and as you can see, her face is already starting to look less llama-y, more horsey. Um, I add layers of detail in, in a different way. You know, I don't just start on the head and go, from start to finish on the whole head when I haven't worked on the rest of the body. I like to jump around and keep things at the same level of detail while I'm working on them in order to make sure that I don't finish an entire portion and then realize that it's disproportionate to the rest of the horse, uh, which is an issue that I've had in the past. It's why I don't sculpt a whole face and then add on the rest of the horse later. Um, I find that that's causes a really unbalanced look, in my opinion. Especially because, you know, even though I've sculpted quite a few of these at this point, I still learn. Every single one of them that I'm working on, um, I learn through the process. So if I start at the face, and I finish the whole face, and then while I'm 
sculpting the shoulders, I learned something new that I, I hadn't thought of before and then implemented in the rest of the horse. Well, the styles aren't going to look exactly the same between the face and the rest of the horse. And that's just uh, unbalanced and unfortunate. Um, you can see kind of her uh, anatomical structures are, are getting uh, added into this and tweaked. And um, I kind of almost think of it like you have a blanket resting over the animal and it kind of obscures all the details but but what details would push through if if you had a piece of cloth laying over top of them um, and then as you're going you make it sharper and sharper and sharper until it's um, the correct look of the face I'm not sure if that makes sense to anyone but myself but that's kind of how I like to think about these things I do a lot of tweaking with the shoulder here as you can see I have sort of the angles correct but I don't have the um, mass correct um, right now I'm adding in the, the little musculature areas that I see the areas that stick out um, the knees the uh, muscles at the crest of the legs the uh, the ugh. I'm not remembering any names of actual anatomical <laughs> stuff anymore. Um, but as you can see, I, I just kind of dry up the leg. Um, I tend to sculpt kind of bulky. So what I do a lot is um, sculpt things in and not worry about the fact that I've thickened them up too much and then use um, what's called the pinch tool and uh, pinch the legs thin again so that they still have those areas that really stand out but they're not chunky because this horse is very lithe and 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 very race fit um which i think is a really interesting look on a horse because if you've ever seen an off the track thoroughbred they they pretty much don't look like this anymore like a month after they're off the track this is like the highest um level of fitness a horse can can achieve almost and and i really thought it would be interesting to try and portray that you're really having to push push the musculature uh push the dryness of the bones and the legs and the neck and the ribs and um i think that's a really interesting challenge and i am going to enjoy finishing this horse eventually although uh, a couple others may get in ahead um as you can see, it, it, it's kind of starting to look more like a horse, kind of starting to look more like her, uh, but I still have some issues with um, some gumminess, some angles being incorrect. Definitely the width of the horse. I tend to sculpt them quite thin through the, uh, a, a, along the x-axis for some reason. Um, and I, that's definitely something I have to go in and adjust afterwards. Um, like I said, I'm just showing you guys how I do the bases for these. Um, as you saw, this just started out as, as one ball, uh, one mesh. And like I said in my other video, that's maybe not the easiest way to do it, but it's what makes sense for me. Um, I don't know how many people who, you know, follow me on Instagram and stuff around here, but I do have, um, some learning disabilities and, and some, uh, things that make it a little more challenging for me to juggle multiple difficult uh, j just, just information dense things, which is why I also didn't watch a ton of videos and things before jumping into this. I kind of self teach myself everything because I have a short attention span for, for learning things like that. And, uh, for the most part, I, I enjoy the process that I have created here. It's not for everybody, but it's what makes sense for me. And like I, uh, said in another video, it's, really great to have multiple um, photos of the same horse at different angles. So right here I'm looking at the side view and the front view of the horse on the left to try and get the angle of the muscles on her legs uh, as accurate as possible. And you can see I kind of sculpted that in and then dried the legs down. And uh, then I'm going to go for the hooves. Um, there is a tool um, that I will pull up in a minute where you can overlay a grid onto this so that you can make sure that your horse is standing flat and uh, that one leg isn't incredibly higher than the others. That's an issue that I had with my first couple sculptures is that I couldn't figure out how to tell if the feet of my horse were all four flat on the ground at the same length 
and um, I that's one of the tools that I eventually figured out how to use, and uh, I think that's been really helpful. Um, another th reason why I sculpt this horse flat on all fours first, uh, regardless of, of what position I'm going to put them in, is so that the legs are all the same length, so that the um, anatomy doesn't look odd. Um, I cut up a Chris Hess foal a while ago to try and, and r the running foal to try and make it look standing instead of running. And um, after I cut it up and started putting it back together, I realized all four legs were different lengths. <laughs> and uh, so that's something I really try to think about when I'm doing this. Um, I start almost all my horses flat on all fours with X mirroring on. Uh, unless they're going to be in a very outrageous pose like a jumper, um, my jumping uh, Pergeron uh, Brontes, I started in a jumping position that was mirrored um, with the X mirroring. Um, so not the exact position that I wanted him to be in at the end. I definitely still tweaked um, and made his limbs um, go off in different directions. But it's easier to start them like that with the really wild um, shapes uh, at, at something that's going to be closer to where you want them in the final product uh, so that you don't mess up a lot of the musculature when you're pulling and um, readjusting. Taking a, a standing horse into a, a jump is absolutely possible, but it's a little more difficult because you have a lot more rippling uh, muscles and, and change of um, spine position and, and things like that to worry about. Um, when you're doing that. And as you can see here, I'm using that grid to make sure that the uh, hooves fall on the same line after I'm finished. Um, pretty close to coming to the end of my intro. Uh, I This is about where I get the body before I start detailing, and, and this is where I take a break, um, generally when I'm sculpting. I don't, of course, like to add the hair until almost the very last thing, because regardless of what position your horse is in, it's going to be really difficult to adjust a standing hair to a, a flowing, jumping, moving, walking hair um, because they, they just flow with the breeze so distinctively um, and that, that really will change with whatever position you decide to put the horse in. And uh, not perfect at the end of this. I don't have all the anatomy correct. It's something that I'm going to continue to adjust throughout. But uh, it's a really good base for now, a, a really good um, piece to work off of, and, and definitely something that has potential at personality. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys enjoyed watching my beginning process on these pieces. Um, if you are interested in more of my work, interested in seeing more of my stuff, I have an Instagram uh, in, at, at Break the Mold Studios. <laughs> Excuse me, at Break the Mold underscore Studios. My Facebook is at Break the Mold Studios. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. If you have any more comments, questions, anything you'd like me to focus on next time that I'm working on this project. Um, or any other project, um, pop them in the comments below or send me a message on Instagram and uh, I'll try to include whatever is going to be helpful for you guys. So y'all have a great weekend. Um, thanks so much.